Welcome, Savvy Seeker, to the Spiritual Phoenix Podcast. This is your audio oasis and paranormal portal. You can experience legendary guests, thought-provoking tarot readings, astonishing astrological forecasts, and exposure to ideas intent on igniting your unlimited inspiration. Subscribe today to keep your fire burning. One last thing, you are encouraged to reach out and ask questions. Become a part of the show. Now, please enjoy today's episode. All right. Welcome back, everybody. We have Stephanie Capone here with us today. Uh, What's up, Stephanie? Hey, Ross. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing pretty okay. I'm really sweaty, but beyond that, I'll survive. (laughs) Thank you for sharing that. (laughs) Right. People can't see. I need the world to know that I'm suffering to record this for them. Yeah, it's been a really hot summer. That's the thing, dude. It's actually one of the cooler days here in Ohio. Um, it's just, for whatever reason, it's super hot in my room right now. Um, All right. So last week, we went over Temperance and the Kings. Um, do you want to do a rundown of that, or do you just want them to go listen to the last episode? I would love it if they went and listened to the last episode. Um, I hope that everybody enjoyed our last four episodes that were on the court cards. I know that that's like a big place of challenge for people. So I hope you guys listen to that and we'd love to hear from you and hear what your thoughts are. I know there are so many different ways of reading tarot and maybe you don't agree with our, (laughs) our um, perspectives and we'd love that. We'd love, we'd love to talk to you about that too. So hit us up. Uh, Today we're going to be talking about the devil the devil? What What the devil? Um, so let's start with your card from the Moon Void Tarot. Uh, it's interesting how you have it. The woman, uh, I assume is you, chained to the uh, hourglass. Yes. Can you, can you explain yourself? <laughs> um, well, with the, I feel like the devil is really about time Hmm. and feeling like we don't have enough of it and because especially when you're reading a lot of people aren't maybe they're maybe they're not connected to the devil in the traditional sense but I think that obviously there are those traditional implications of being chained to something that isn't good for you, whether that's alcohol or drugs or relationships that are abusive in some way or codependent relationships. Um, But really it's about either feeling that you don't have enough time or engaging in things that waste your time. Mm. We are fortunate to live in a, in an era where we have a lot of privilege and we have a lot of access because we are not fighting famine or loss of habitat or natural disasters and diseases in the ways of our ancestors. We've had the luxury of time to create this vast world that includes anything that your mind could come up with. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed just through the whole process of exploring spirituality and questioning why we're here, I realized that most of the things in the material world that we've created to entertain ourselves are actually things that are time wasters. Mm -hmm. I agree with that completely. And so there's a term that um, I listen, I love podcasts. I love, um, podcasts that that marry business with like spirituality and mindset and all that stuff and there's this woman her name is Brooke Castillo and she does the a podcast she's like a life coach and her podcast is the life coach school podcast and she calls it buffering Mm -hmm. so when you're sitting scrolling on your phone for hours that's buffering when you watch tv for you know, when you get off work and to, to power down, 
it's buffering or when you're stressed out and instead of doing something, you turn to food or anything like it's all buffering. So the moon void tarot is really about buffering because maybe when you're reading for people, they're not, they're not, you know, going through like drug addiction or alcohol or something like traditionally devil, but the devil is in the way we buffer and take ourselves away from self-reflection because that's hard and scary. So the devil is like facing those, facing your shadow. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this though, uh, just to be the devil's advocate, but uh, <laughs> as far as buffering though, I know personally, I take that to the extreme sometimes too. Like when I go to avoid it where I won't do like, like no buffering whatsoever. Um, I won't sit down. Like I didn't watch TV for, the better part of a year like I consciously had to make time to like play video games and relax or like do anything that like regular people do um yeah. and that's really fucking unhealthy too it's it's hard to reintroduce yourself after you've had like a, a glimpse into enlightening experiences it's really hard to go back and engage with the regular world because you don't hmm. want to be there. Yeah, in um, Buddhism, they have the term bodhisattva, who is one who's kind of had that experience and then comes back and consciously chooses to re-engage to help other people. Um, and it's maddening in some senses because even when I, like, I'm not saying I'm a bodhisattva, that's a pretty arrogant thing to say, but even from having like a really deep spiritual experience and then trying to come back and reintegrate, um, it's difficult at times because part of me is like, well, I don't want to relax because this is a waste of time. And I'm like, well, I need to waste some time. And it's like finding that, that right balance of it. And then for me personally too, as a recovering uh, addict being like, well, at least it's not drugs. Like is a video game really that bad? Is a bag of chips here and there that bad? Um, but I guess at the same time, it's still ad like addictive behavior in the sense of like being addicted to like um, what's the term? personal development is like an addiction as well or being like addicted to the gym that was yeah. like a, a big thing for me lately um understanding how you can be addicted to really healthy things and completely ruin your life in a different way well i think it's like understanding and again we've talked about this in past episodes of noticing when you replace one habit with the other mm -hmm. noticing when it's time to switch things up. And when we're using something, anything, like you said, it could be a healthy thing, could be an unhealthy thing, but just using something to occupy your time to not be doing something else, whether that's engaging in a spiritual practice or engaging with your hum with humanity, like you have to be able to. Yeah. You have to have the full spectrum of the human experience of spirituality, uh, community, reflection, play, like, I think one of the things that I've found, um, this is the last little side note I'll get on that we can get back to like the devil at, as a card more so um, if, if you want. But one of the things that I've really found is I never realized how difficult it actually was to like, to people, like to be a person and like do all of the things that's required um, to actually be healthy. And then really understanding that like, most people aren't doing some of those aspects and like really trying to consciously integrate community, spirituality, proper eating, proper rest, creativity. That is a lot of fucking work, dude. It sure can be. Ah, wise way to say it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's true. Um, we, I think that the, a word that comes to mind with this is entrapment. Hmm. Like feeling, uh, let me ask you this, how so? Feeling like that you have to do some certain thing and then it becoming its own, like you're just what you were saying, like, to be healthy, you have to do this, 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 and that. And it's like, it's so much work. And then again, you feel like kind of chained to it. 
like you've entrapped yourself into thinking this is the way in order to be healthy, then these are the things I have to do. But you know what, maybe to get healthy at the time, those were the things that you had to do. And now, now that you are at a different stage of the game, maybe you don't have to engage in all of those things. Maybe you just allow yourself to do a couple of things, whatever you can do per day and not judge yourself based on, oh, I didn't get to, I didn't meditate for 15 minutes or I didn't, I didn't return those phone calls and emails or I didn't like eat like this amount of salad and drink this many cups of water. Like it's too much, <laughs> man. Like just be. Yeah. The way that you kind of explained and trap it made me think of a line from um, an incubus song. And the line is something along the lines of uh, you can make a, a privilege feel like a chore. <laughs> And that was like a big thing for me last year, understanding like, instead of saying I have to go to the gym, it's I get to go to the gym and like understanding like where I was at at one point where I didn't give a shit and now I'm taking it way too seriously. I think that's a, a really good tie in for that though. Like, I really like how you put that. And the other aspect of this too is like feeling like you don't have the time. I think that's a really, really big, um, with a lot of people, especially if you're like you're a small business owner or an entrepreneur, feeling like you have to do everything and like the demand of social media and the demand of everything. And if you're not having the money coming in, feeling so chained to your business that the thing that like you loved um, can't really switch to that. And that's one of the things even for me where like, I'm really having to change my relationship with all this stuff because the work is never going anywhere. <laughs> like as long as I'm doing this, there's always going to be stuff that needs to get done. Um, and it's not sustainable to be in that space of constantly having the empty hourglass. <laughs> like it's just not sustainable. So it's like the ability to kind of pull back and say, I get to do this, but I also don't need to do it. It may be exactly how I think I should um right or just being flexible and that brings us into not trying to jump just adding to the conversation that the devil card is also a card that signifies capricorn mm -hmm. just feeling that you have to do i just lost my train of thought what was i saying you're talking about capricorn and have to do yeah like you have to do all of these things in order to like Capricorn doesn't ever give themselves a break. Hmm. So they're very like goal oriented and process oriented instead of being more abstract. Right. Like they're not in the flow of like just allowing things to like, I didn't get to it today and beating myself up about it or comparing myself to other people isn't going to give me that time back. Hmm. I like the way that you put that as well. This brings me up to the numerology of this, and I have a question for you. So that would be, without adding it and making it the lover's card, um, which I want to get into that aspect of it too, the one in the uh, five element of it would be the hierophant and the magician. So the magician is all about the creative potential of things and being like on that journey. And the hierophant, I've heard people call it like the doctor of the soul. Um, so when focusing on those two cards, like tapping into the spiritual aspect of how you create things kind of be the counter, one of the ways to counter this card. And that you bring up a very interesting point. Um, when I think of the Hierophant and the magician together, I feel like the magician is making things happen because of their connection between like they're that channel they're the conduit to bring the universe things from the universe down to earth and the hierophant is is the tradition saying well this is how it has to be done hmm. and this is what we follow and these are our like like I look at the Hierophant as being the operations manual and okay, and the magician being like, no, fuck that noise. I can, I, we've got this just by being myself. And it's like a disconnect between the two. They're fighting mm -hmm. about it. 
I like the way that you put that as well. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I've, never th I've never thought about it that way. So that was kind of just pull out of my mouth. The way I always looked at it is I never thought about it. I mean, let me back up. Bleh. Lovers aside, six in numerology is the sign of the home and nurturing and the material world. Like six in numerology is like the, the home, the material world and all of that. So when you think about the devil and people being like 666 is a sign of the devil, it's because it's, it's a repeating angel number. Mm. Say the warning is don't get attached to the material and putting your worth into things outside of yourself. Hmm. I like that. I don't know that I've ever heard that explanation, but it makes a lot of sense. Sorry, it took me a long time to get there. I was just like having so many thoughts all at once and they were just all fighting. <laughs> yeah, how, how dare you, Stephanie? <laughs> no, you're fine, dude. Um, so I guess now that we kind of talked about the lovers thing, why don't we get into a little bit more? Because one of the ways that I'm uh, with the uh, Smith weight card, seeing the woman and the man there, it's definitely like, to me, about lust, codependency, like you had kind of touched on before. And those aspects, so it's almost like, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? My mind is not firing on all cylinders, but like uh, tainted love, I guess is how I would put it. I like it. So you can absolutely look at it that way. Um, you know, we look at the lover's card, how originally it was called choice. Hmm. So the choice was between divine love and perverse love so you would look at the angel on the lover's card as divine love and the devil on the devil's card as perverse love so you could definitely look at that as codependency in your relationships but you could also take this as a card about um taboo sexuality okay and the way that we judge things that um we don't understand Another interesting thing about that, though, too, is so the lover's card, if you split it in half, it'll be even. You can't split the devil card in half. It would actually be uh, seven and an eight. So it's always lopsided. So one partner would always be giving more if you view the numbers as like partnership. So then it goes oh, into, like yeah. it's always uneven. That's That's a really profound way of looking at it. Dude, I don't understand how my mind works sometimes. It just pulls okay. out of the ether. <laughs> exactly. So it's a channel. Yeah, ideas have people. <laughs> ideas have people. Um, I think that when this card comes up, a lot of times people get freaked out by it. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many layers to this. Like we had talked about before how it's, it's bringing to the forefront our shadow sides. And because the traditional card has a man and a woman, it's, um, you could almost, if you're not looking at it in terms of a relationship, if you're looking at it just as you as yourself, your masculine and your feminine side and that uneven balance, it's like, okay, what is unbalanced within me? Mm -hmm. Where am I, if the devil is about putting your, power outside of yourself and into the material realm where are you looking for somebody else to complete what you are deficient in i think that's super uh prevalent in our culture right now because i don't yeah. think most people understand even that the concept of a wedding ring was about the completed individual so it was about the unification of the uh, masculine and feminine energy like, it's so interesting to look at how this stuff was represented and how people approach relationships previously um, at, at some points to versus how people approach it now. Um, even as, like, I just go through the dating process and seeing, like, the way that I approach that stuff, even, say, like, six months or a year ago, being like, dude, what the fuck? Like, that's not what any of this is about. Um, and, like, navigating it, it's super interesting. But when you really tie it down to the person, too, um, it becomes even more so. One one thing I want to ask about the Smith weight as well, 
the upside down pentagram, um, my understanding of that is the upside down pentagram. So pentagrams are supposed to be a symbol of the human. And when it's upside down like that, it's kind of saying that their head is in the material, kind of like you had talked about mm -hmm. with the 666. Is that your understanding of upside down pentagram as well? Yeah, I mean, if you look at it too, like if, it, if you're looking at it as like the five points being representative of the elements of, you know, earth, air, fire, water, spirit, mm -hmm. and then you've got the, the, the point that's supposed to be spirit down here pointing towards the ground, then you're saying that instead of revolving your life around higher concepts and the universe, you're putting everything into what's tangible in the physical realm. Hmm. I like that a lot, um, the explanation. I, I don't like the concept of putting everything in the physical realm, but I like the explanation of it. Well, uh, it's, you know, and then it, it makes you think of the phrase as above, so below. Mm -hmm. And how we are thinking in our minds and how what wellness, how well we are inside of ourselves and how connected to source in a collective sense is what manifests outwardly so you could look at that on like a global scale that right now the atrocity that is our planet at the moment is the manifestation of living attached to the material realm and not to the divine realm mm -hmm. there's all sorts of evidence of that um I don't want to go off on a huge tangent. So I don't I'm not either. Sorry. Uh, yeah, we don't. No, have no, to... no. You're you're fine. No, I'm just stopping myself from going where I was going to take it. I don't want to get on one of my big talking points, which is bashing the New Age community. Oh boy. <laughs> um, one of the things I want to ask you though is, do you view this devil as uh, Baphomet in some regard as well, or is some of the similar concepts of Baphomet or Baphomet as some people call it? doesn't have the boobs obviously those are more like pecs i mean yeah i guess that's always kind of what i thought looking at it um but i really honestly didn't take him into consideration as an archetype like i didn't give him that that much thought as more of that he was something conjured up in the minds of our shadow, thinking of like how, how ugly we feel we are inside that we don't talk about. And it just becomes like an ugly monster. It doesn't hmm. look like anything. And The one thing I, would, I just wanted to say about the uh, concept of Baphomet too, though, is a lot of people view it like in a very negative light because it's like uh, it has both genders, but it's actually this principle of both genders being united. And it's actually like a very strong symbol of power and connection and unity. But it's also um, sometimes I think it's represented in that disturbing form because from a terrestrial standpoint, it is very unpleasant maybe. But there's like a lot of, I think that when you really look at the nature of reality um, or what we call reality, it would be unpleasant from the lens of how we choose to look at life. If that makes sense. Definitely. I think that, that that speaks to kind of what's happening in society right now where um, we're realizing again, like historically the card the cards have a man and a woman and we're, you know, you grow up with kind of these gender specific things cram down your throat like you wear pink when you're a girl and you wear blue when you're a boy and you play with trucks if you're a boy and you play with dolls if you're a girl and and now all of this stuff the spirituality stuff coming up saying that it's not about two separate people it's about the blend of your own masculine feminine energy and the more that we open our minds to that the more evidence we see outwardly of the manifestation of people saying you know what there's like 
because I'm so tapped into my masculine and feminine, I don't need to subscribe to one specific. Mm -hmm. It's interesting too. Like I don't have my lover's card handy, but so Baphomet's kind of androgynous and it's, um, and so is the angel. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Like they're both somewhat androgynous. So it's interesting to see that. And this is like the perverse androgyny versus kind of the angelic androgyny of the one. Right. And, and the fact is that we are all divine beings in our androgyny and humanity demonizes that because it's going against what they've learned and it's shaking people to their, to their core and they mm. don't know how to, they don't know how to handle it. Yeah. I mean, the more that you kind of give people discourse within themselves, the more difficult it is for them to be part of a community, the more difficult it is for them to be a part of a community, the more isolated the f they feel, the more isolated they feel, the easier it is for them to be manipulated. So like from a, a, a patriarchal standpoint, it serves a very big purpose, but from like a human standpoint, it's really uh, dehumanizing at the core of it. Yeah. Like all of the things that are rising to the surface that are wonderful and actually moving the needle on the evolution of humanity. Also what comes with it is the fear. Mm hmm and people reacting to things out of fear. And the interesting thing about that too, like is a lot of that fear stems from a place of them just not knowing how to deal with it or not being comfortable within themselves. Exactly. And time it's them. I don't necessarily say that they, they want to do what the other people are doing, but it's the freedom that those people have in being themselves that I think is what makes them afraid because they've compartmentalized so much of their own experience. Mm -hmm. um, that creates a lot of that anger and all of that stuff. It has nothing to do with the, with the people, what people are attracted to or how they show up. It has to do with stuff inside of the people that have all the hate and fear and anger about it. Exactly. And that was the thing we did not say at the beginning of talking about this card is that fear. When this comes up, it's like, what are you afraid of? Hmm. And it depends on when you're, when you're reading what, it, what is the, what is the overarching message? You know, are you asking about a love reading? Are you asking about a career reading? Are you asking about your family? Are you asking about health? So uh, when this, when the devil card comes up, what are you demonizing? What are you afraid of? Hmm. Like we don't have to over, like we, you and I, we take it to like really deep levels, but people, when they're doing the readings, you don't have to take it that far. And you could just say, what am I afraid of? What am I demonizing out of fear? Mm -hmm. And back to the buffering, what am I buffering with because I don't want to deal with what I'm afraid of? Yeah, I think that's a really good uh, outlook on it too. Yeah, I mean, it, if we just talked about like the key points, we wouldn't have much of a show. So we got to take it to the next level. Um, but yeah, I like the buffering concept a lot. It's something I'm really going to tie into my reading. And then it really is the fear. Uh, because addiction and all that stuff is actually based upon fear. It's that avoidance. It is that buffering. So you don't have to face whatever is in front of you. Um, since we're back at full circle at that, I'm going to say, I don't have anything else to add. Do you have anything else to add? Um, I guess I just really, again, want to just say that like, it's really important too when that you and I've had conversations about this. It's like, what do you fear about your own sexuality? Mm. What do you fear about your, about your gifts? What do you fear about yourself that you don't want other people to know because you're afraid that maybe you're going to be met with resistance or judgment or rejection. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those times, if you fail to engage especially in relationships, then that's where problems and self-esteem problems, problems with the communication problems within your relationships, feeling unfulfilled, isolating yourself. That's all devil stuff. Hmm. 
That's heavy. <laughs> I don't have anything else to say beyond that's heavy. I I like how you said that you put an image of the different tarot cards on your phone background so you can kind of sit with that. So I think it would be, it's really an excellent um, exercise to do to sit with the devil card. You know, if you have an altar at home, sit with the devil card and think about the categories of your life. Think about money. Think about love. Think about sexuality. Think about family interactions. Think about how you show up in society and maybe pull cards around that and say, what am I demonizing? What am I afraid of in this area, this area, this area, and see what comes up. And it could have like huge, like these, this is why tarot is amazing for self-reflection in a safe way, because you don't have to have this conversation with anybody, but your own subconscious mind and your higher self. I really like that. Yeah, I, might, I might have to try that. It's so funny, dude. As I go forward, I don't hardly ever read for myself anymore. Like I hardly ever pull cards what? for myself. Oh man, I do it every day from like three different decks. Yeah, I'm going to actually have to start doing that more in my own personal practice. I've really fallen out of a lot of the good habits that I have by trying to do all these other things that like I thought I should be doing. So like getting yeah. wrapped up in the buffering of what I should do rather than what actually has worked for me. I find that when things stop, they, when they start to feel like a should and I don't feel the same sense of joy that it brought me or not even joy, but just the, um, like they were my coping mechanisms for a time mm -hmm. and, and I've grown past that. So sometimes I have to like wipe the whole slate clean and be like, okay, I'm just going to wake up and just like, have coffee I'm not going to journal I'm not going to pull my cards I'm not going to do this that or the other I'm going to like I'm just going to see what comes up and what I feel called to do and not from a oh I should be doing this point of view and that's really where I'm at right now and it's so uncomfortable <laughs> like trying these different routines and like just seeing how it, how I navigate through them like um it's uncomfortable to do it in the sense that I like the structure of my old way, but the old way I was doing stuff wasn't working. So now yeah, it's like you, you came to the place where you were done with it. Just like, think about when you go through your steps, mm -hmm. how do you know you're ready to get to the next step when you complete the other step and you just have like an inner knowing. So just think about it as you're ready to get on to another step. Mm -hmm. And yeah. instead of, instead of the 12 steps that you were given through this program, it's like, okay, Ross has reached the Kings. He's reached the end of the line. Now he's going to write the program himself. What are, Ross, oh, oh no, what are no. Ross's next 12 steps? Oh no. We're all eager to see. Eat cake and be fat and merry. Sounds like a plan to me. <laughs> right. Um, all Stephanie. Right, that, that was my tangent. <laughs> You're all good. Rant over. So the key points of this again are, um, Buffering is a word that you would use, which I really like. Fear. Um, I would just add addiction. Um, Entrapment, we said. That was a good word, too. And then uh, lust. You had used it a different way than lust, though. Um, I don't remember what you said. Oh, we're going to have to do an entire episode about human sexuality because I have so many different thoughts on that, but. I'm down. I'm down to talk <laughs> about whatever. It's all good. Um, yeah, it's, it's like choosing perverse love over, which I guess you could call lust, but I don't necessarily think that's a demonizable term. I don't think that's a bad thing, but it's a shame. That's a good word. Devil brings out shame. What are hmm. you, what brings shame up for you? Hmm. Okay, yeah. I mean, that's something we might want to unpack sometime too, <laughs> like shame in itself. Yeah. I feel like I can get a whole episode because our culture is shame based. It is. It's shame and fear based. Mm hmm. And I think that when the devil card comes up, it's like, okay, what what are you afraid of? What are you ashamed of? What are you demonizing? What are you comparing? Like you can see in Moonboy Tarot, she's chained to that time clock or she's chained to the um, hourglass, but she's looking away. It's like 
she's watching everybody else Mm -hmm. and comparing herself. Like I'm not farther along Mm. or I'm wasting my time doing this, that, and the other. I like it. I like it. I didn't show you your card. I did good. (laughs) It's okay. I know you have it in front of you and I showed it to you like 35 times. So (laughs) nobody can see this video. Thank goodness. But I really appreciate everybody for showing up and listening to Ross and I rant. (laughs) Yeah. Thank you everyone so much. Tarot rant. Um, Next week, the tower cannot wait. Hopefully nothing bad happens where we can't do it. Hopefully the the foundation doesn't crumble. (laughs) No, because by the time we record that, we'll be out of Mercury retrograde. We'll be fine. That's fair. It ends July 31st. It does. Thank Jeebus. Yes. My birthday is July 29th. Oh, really? Yes. So everybody wish me a happy birthday. Please listen to our show. Please go read your monthly sex sexoscopes i can't talk because i just wrote them for dame so they'll be up on the dame blog august 1st speaking of human sexuality i write about it for your sign every month y'all better go check that out and wish stephanie a happy birthday on social media (laughs) um yeah stephanie thanks so much for coming on thanks everyone for listening You can get a hold of uh, me via email on uh, the information will be below. Stephanie and I's Instagram will be below. Uh, You can purchase the Moon Void Tarot at moonvoidtarot.com or at etsy.com slash shop slash moonvoidtarot. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for listening. If you love this show, one kind review goes a long way. If you have a question or comment you'd like read on air, please send your email to staff at spiritualphoenixstudios.com or use the link in the show notes.